Welcome to my channel. Um, I'm going to do a, a series of videos regarding this one-off world first exposure of a system. A free energy system. Never, never been thought of before or, or been mentioned in this configuration. Now we, a lot of us will know about the road and coil, right? It's a single system and the philosophy behind it all. What Marco used to talk about, he was right on the nail, but he didn't really have the full system. He's got a, just a single unit system. He was missing the fact that it should be a dual system that feeds itself because it feeds the energy back into the system. And we know, we know that the, the um, over unity is created within this core system, but it's the perpetual feeding that recycles it all through, that keeps it going, and it's all in this model. It's like a it's like a double core system, and we know if the cores are normally you know stepping down or stepping up, they're not they're not often the same. Impotence they call it. The, this, this, the length of this copper here is basically the same length as what's going on in here. They're equal. And this refers back to Greek words isotropic. Isos being equal and tropo. Tropo being turn and change. Because the system within our Earth system changes because Earth is negative. This is positive. So there's the AC system. And that's what Tessa knew about. And that's how he came to design his induction motor. And I'm going to read you something that he's put in here. He's, he's got written down. Now, I'm going to do a series on these because one day someone's going to get it. Because I'm not an electrical engineer. I can't even... I'm going to try and test it. I'm, I'm getting some equipment. But I don't really know what I'm doing. But I know the system works because it works for that. And Earth is a magnetic field, and it's a dual system. But science hasn't got their head around about this, the, around this dual system. Um, so we could say the magnetic. Well, we know our system's electromagnetic, so we have electricity and magnetism, and you don't have magnetism without electricity, or vice versa. But we don't have uh, uh, copper cables running around the world, do we? No, it's all a magnetic system. So there's two entities. And, it's, and it brings us back to high and low pressure because the magnetic field moves in the wind. The wind carries the magnetic field. The Egyptians, Plato, they all talk about that. And that's what's happening. That's what drives the whole magnetic field. Our whole system is the wind drives the magnetic field. And we have two systems. We have the, the, iso, the, the tropics, sorry, arctics, north and south, both cold. In the middle, we have the tropics, cold, Cold in the middle of the tropics, the warm. Hot, the cold rushing to hot. There's the dual system. There's no south and north on a spinning ball. There's no spinning ball to Earth. It's complete bullshit. The, the cold from there and there rushes to the tropics. So you could say this is south, there's north for south. Then we have north here and there's south for the northern hemisphere. So there's north and south for the hemis northern hemisphere. Here's south and north for the southern hemisphere. So this system, so we can't create a dual magnetic field unless we get the get the get this thing made properly and it starts feeding itself. So it would have to be an exterior outdoor system where it's using the atmosphere to circulate, just like Earth does basically. So it just re it pulls in the, the warm air and just drive the cold and warm air just circulates. But we'd have to form some sort of... That would be another system, I think. Another, uh, close, to get the hot and the cold, we'd have to have a closed system. But like this sort of thing, like a Tomarack fusion system, where it's closed. And maybe have some sort of cold freezing pressure out here, high pressure, 
but the, uh, the, the electric current should create the warmth in here because the magnetics in between the two currents, the parallel currents here, they create this magnetic field. And um, I didn't bring that into this video, but there's a, uh, there's a patent and they, he talks about um, hyperspace and wormholes. It's been created here. It's like a third entity here. Two entities here and a third entity. And that's the magic that comes out and it gets sucked back down into here. So basically it's the high pressure flowing up down through the earth and goes negative and shoots off in the opposite directions. So it's flowing down here. It's not going to do a right angle shoot across earth back to here. It, it, it just flows back through the earth and back up again. A lot comes up back up here, but a lot actually goes back in there, shoots in there, gets trapped in there, and this hot air coming out of here goes down and gets sucked in there, and that's where the plasma is created in, the, in a um, fusion reactor. So that's why it should work, because that's why Earth works, because that's where our sun is. So, when it comes to designing this system, it's, it's to be designed because all religions and that lead to this, it's the Holy Grail basically. And I'm going to read you something no one will ever understand, but I'm, I've got a paragraph out of the Holy Grail, the story of King Arthur. It sort of sums up a little bit. But th this is it. Once you get the current going, you should be able to detach the current, but it depends on what sort of system you're doing. You need a, a little bit of current to have the over unity which creates the magnetic field and, and, and go from there, like a Roman coil. Or we have some sort of system where we're using the, the wind, the cold, hot and the cold to drive itself. And so basically it's creating the plasma and then you're just getting the energy off, out of that plasma. So I'm no physicist, so I'm sure, I'm sure they know how to do it. Uh, so yeah, so you, you can close it in like this, but this current, what's happening is, um, this is, this is, this comes down here and shoots off this way. So I don't think we need all this, because Earth, Earth itself is negative, and that's positive. So there's the AC induction system there. So... I don't think we need that. So this would be, um, you know, Earth is negative. This is positive above. And it just hits the Earth and it shoots off in the opposite direction. So it'll come down there and then shoots back here and starts going back up there. This comes down there, hits there, shoots off, goes back up there. So then you bring capacitors, capacitors into it. Like I said, I'm not an electrical engineer. But I've done it to the... There's a bit of thought needed in there. You have to do a bigger model to get, or you know, if you want to make these heavy duty, like a lot more cabling in here, twist some cable, twist some copper, get the energy really pumping, you'd have to have a bigger hole, I think. And, and you have to make a bigger model. But I see it as a, an outside unit which can suck air back in here, it recycles that, uh, replenishes the atmosphere, and ionizes, purifies the atmosphere. And, um, or, you know, create the plasma, create all the energy back down in there, uh, as an outside unit, and uh, I'm sure that there's a little bit of current flowing in there, it'll, you'll get your over unity to power for a power supply otherwise you're closing in the system like this so because there's all this powerful spin in here magnetic field in here that's what suck draws that back into there it's not going to flow that way because it's rushing back to here that's uh, all the higher pressure so the low pressure wants to rush back into it nothing much going on out here So, you know, this comes over like this, flows to there and comes back up there, like this. So you must get a little bit coming in here. <laughs> it's um, colliding with this, come back and collide, 
collide with the high pressure, I suppose. I don't know, that's probably something to do with the um, auroras. <laughs> but this is the way it works. Someone's going to have to click. It's about, uh, you know, um, resonating frequency, AC induction for this system. Anyway, I'll put that aside for a sec. And I'll just read what Tesla's left. I don't know if he did it this way to, to, to hide it or someone's altered his words. But this is what he said. Thus altering his mass independently, both in bulk and density, only three ways possible to obtain this result, which are illustrated in the above diagram. The first way to increase the top figure is to increase the mass and indi as indicated by the dotted circle, leaving the two opposing forces the same. These opposing forces here. The second way is to reduce the retarding force R to a smaller value R, leaving the mass and the impelling force the same as diagrammatically shown in the middle figure. The third way, which is illustrated in the last figure, is to increase the impelling force F. I think F was the gap to a higher value F, while the mass and the retarding force R remain unaltered. Evidently, fixed limits exist as regards increase of mass and reduction of retarding force, but the impelling force can be increased indefinitely. Each of these three possible solutions presents a different aspect of the main problem of increasing human en energy, which thus divided into the three distinct problems to be successfully considered. Now, some will laugh and think that's got nothing to do with this model or this figure, but I'm putting it out there for those who can think. Now, you'll know and all that ever pick up on this, but from the Holy Grail, this is basically the Holy Grail from the King Arthur story, it's spelled the spelling it out, the waterfall down in here, going fishing, you get your line, drop your line down in here. So you think I'm mad, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is a bit taken away from it. Uh, many later works have two wounded grail kings. So there's the two. They're wounded, as in wounded, coils, who live in the same castle, a father and son. Father and the son, or grandfather and grandson. The more seriously wounded father stays in the castle. It's in there, right in the centre there, that's where the action is. Sustained by the grail alone. And what's the grail? Oh, I'll tell you what the grail is. Yeah. You look up the etymology of grail, right? Uh, the Holy Grail, from Old French, Grail, Grail, Holy Grail, Cup, either large, shallow dish, basin, from Medieval Latin, Gradalis, also Gradale, Grassale, a flat dish or shallow vessel. The original form is uncertain. The word is perhaps ultimately from Latin, Crater, Bowl, Crater. No? Does it look like in the middle there? A Crater. Bowl, trust me, it's spelled out in the Holy Grail. King Arthur story. Uh, sustained by the Grail alone, because that's where the energy is. That's where the, that's where the king is, right in that middle there. With the more active son can meet with guests and go fishing. And the story, it's, he's out here, he's dropped his line down here, straight down there, fishing. That's the waterfall. It's mentioned in the ground too. The waterfall fishing. Uh, you get the two parallel currents. This is in physics. It's all about the two parallel currents and the magnetic field created between them. Uh, so, as guess, the guess is the what's being created in this gap. The guess for the program. You've got this happening, this happening, but you've got this third entity in here. I'm calling the guests. Uh, 
for the by the grout while the more active son can meet with guests and go fishing. For the purpose of clarity in the remainder of this article where, where both appear, the father will be called the wounded king, the son named the fisher king. Uh, the fisher king legend imply that he becomes unable to father or support a next. I don't want the rest of that. It was a while ago. But anyway, that's the system. Someone's going to click one day. It's all about creating the magnetic fields. And, um, oh, there's another article, I'll probably, probably put another video, uh, video regarding uh, what Tester was saying about the mechanical side. We need to, we're not going to advance till we start seeing, not the physical, but the non-physical. Understanding the non-physical. And that's basically creation in the world. The, the magnetic field. What we don't see. And all that, you know, all the celestial bodies up here, we see up at night. Nothing, nothing is seen, nothing is physical. Until it phases, and, and until it gets its uh, halo. It's the halo we're seeing around the non-physical. That makes it appear like the moon where it phases grows its, its skin. That's the, the halo from that, the field outside of the invisible sphere, the invisible orb, whatever. It's not the actual moon, it's what's around it. That makes it visible. I'll stop it there, probably driven everyone insane. I think I am, that's for sure. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>